everybody, welcome back to yet another review of a tutorial that you want me to do. Unless you live under a rock, you don't use TikTok, or maybe you're just new to wearing your hair curly, wavy, coily, and you don't even know who I am. Well, hi, I am your main girl Mel. I'm a professionally trained hairstylist, a curly hair specialist, your curly hair guru, and so many of you wanted me to try the viral bowl method as seen on TikTok. But we gotta bring it back for a minute because this technique is not new. The bowl method is a styling technique using a bowl, which in turn is to add maximum hydration to your hair as well as dilute your styling products so you get maximum volume as well. But the reason why I am inclined to do this today is because so many of you personally tagged me in Curly Zia's post. Now, Curly Zia is a TikToker. She went mega viral sharing this technique, how it looks with her curls, which are a little bit more like waves, wavy curls. And so today we're gonna see what that does to me. So without further ado, I wanna take you through my curly hair routine here, my interpretation of this technique, and if I really think that it works or if you should do it. So let's just get to it. My hair is currently in this, what, what people call a wet plop. Uh, it's just with my conditioner in this shower cap, marinating, if you will, because I did begin with a wash and condition. Once again, the bowl method is to give you maximum hydration to the hair, but maximum hydration is going to come if your hair is clean. So after a thorough shampoo, I used a conditioner that uh, hasn't launched yet. Just to share a little sneak peek behind the scenes, this is currently something that I am testing. It's been a rough week. I hadn't washed my hair for about six or seven days, so it was super, super knotted. And after detangling, I also went ahead and rinsed out this mask, which uh, is not what you're supposed to do. When doing the bowl method, you're supposed to apply your conditioner to your ends, work it through, and then continue with the bowl method basically leaving in some of your regular conditioner, which is not something that I like to do, not something that you necessarily should do, especially if you're using a rinse out conditioner. There is a reason why there are different products for a rinse out conditioner and a leave-in conditioner. And we did a whole video on that and different types of conditioners previously, which I will link up here if you wanna check it out. But basically, sometimes there are ingredients in a rinse out conditioner that are not meant to be left in. So if you're Product says, rinse out thoroughly. I would recommend rinsing out thoroughly. So after I tried out that mask, I did go in with a Bounce Curl Deep Conditioner and that's where we are right now. So let's bulgin. Bulgin. So finally, step one of the bowl method. God, will you just get right to it? This is what we're gonna start with. We're gonna fill a cup, a jug, a whatever with water. Mine is warm because I don't, I don't like to rinse my hair with cold water. Not like it's gonna seal my cuticle any better. The only thing that can help to tighten your strand and the cuticle and prevent swelling of the cuticle is not your water temperature. It's the 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 or the pH. That was kind of disturbing. We're gonna be upside down for an extended period of time. Leaning over your bowl, you want to take your water and pour it over your head. Pour it starting at your scalps. Are you oh? Yeah, it's a messy one. You want to make sure that you are over the bowl and that you're catching all of that water that you are pouring. Since this is how you are rinsing out your product, you really want to make sure that you're rinsing any conditioner that might be left on your scalp. But that's because it's a conditioner for my hair and not my scalp care. So do what feels right for you with whatever you're using. So now we squish. Now you're supposed to do this until you can't see any frizz. If there is still frizz, they say to add more conditioners. I'm going to add leave-in conditioner, because again, this is being left in. So you're supposed to do this about four times or so until you see just really nice big clumps that you're happy with. What I'm noticing is, well, there's still frizz. It seems no matter how many times I try to do this, there is frizz. But I believe that's because my hair is very high porosity. What this is doing is as you are squishing to condition, it's helping to kind of drive moisture into your strands. I don't have any trouble with that. My strands already absorb moisture as I give it to them. Um, and so I feel like this is just making my strands a little maybe over moisturized. 
soft but also frizzy i mean and let me rephrase that not that the technique itself is making my hair frizzy but i do feel like my strands have this floofiness to them they look very plumped i mean we're just gonna keep going i feel like the curls at this stage are as good as they're going to get doing this technique so i can now dump out this water look how cloudy it is from the conditioner I actually feel like it's also a little bit pink from the pink I've been putting in my hair. And now to my soaking wet hair, I will add the gel and continue with this squishing, squashing situation. I am going to apply it generously with the gel because my hair is soaking wet as I am applying. It's really going to dilute it and I want to make sure that I'm going to get enough hold. So I'm going to gently glaze this over my strands and this is just going to make sure that everything is pretty evenly coated before I continue to squish out all of the excess water. I'm going to do one last dip, a little bit of water that's in the bowl for good luck. Give her a scrunch. And that's the bowl method. I'm going to finish scrunching it with my microfiber towel. That's going to help to absorb most of the water as well. I already tried to squish out the excess, but this is going to help absorb the excess. And now I'm going to hover diffuse. That's my technique that I like to use and have shown you because I can't stand to have this hair wet any longer. But as per the method, you can plop, air dry, whatever it takes to get your hair dry in the fastest way possible so that we can reveal the results. One more thing though, because there's so little product in my hair right now at this point, we've diluted the crap out of it. I want to make sure that I'm going to get enough hold. I'm going to spritz on a little bit of hairspray while the hair is still wet. That feels a little bit better. So these are my freshly dry results from the bowl without scrunching out the crunch, which if it wasn't for that little hairspray spray, I'm sure there would not be much of. So I'm really glad that I put that in. So let's go ahead and finish it off with my oil or serum. I'm using the Verb Ghost Oil. I'm going to take that serum. I especially like this serum because it is lightweight. I'm excited to see how much volume is in here. But I also need this serum. It's thicker than your typical like lightweight hair oil. I also need this to help seal because there was a lot of squishing and upwards motion. So I just kind of want to slick everything down if that's possible. Okay, let's get a good look at it. Let's do some reviewing. First impressions, how do my curls feel? They definitely feel soft. They don't feel like they have a lot of product on them. They don't. And while I do have decent volume, it's okay, it's still fresh, day one hair, I do get an elongated vibe from my curls. Now I've seen some people say that this has made their hair appear curlier. And for wavies, I may see that to be true. But for me, on a tighter texture, I am noticing more weight to the curls. They're looking plumped, but also elongated. So that's one thing. Otherwise, I don't notice a huge difference in the way my curls look compared to when I brush style on wet, damp hair, which is what I usually do. Very different from this technique. And so I am surprised that I don't notice a huge, huge difference in the curls which to me means I can get a similar result without having to go through the trouble of using a bowl. So that's just a plus one for me in my back. But does that mean that this technique is bad? Although I can only speak from personal experience here, I can talk to you a little bit about hair science, and that is our hair does not necessarily need lots of water. Water is actually not good for hair. Our hair, when it is healthy, is naturally hydrophobic. It's against water, and that's why with low porosity textures that find the hair can be very brittle and resistant to water, this whole bowl and squishing to conditioning method is going to help kind of drive water into the strands, which will give a fluffier, plumper result to your curls and that maximum hydration that you might be looking for. But for me and maybe you, if your hair is high porosity, if you're color treated, you're damaged, I don't think that this is going to be the best technique for you to continue to do because the more water that your hair is exposed to, the more damaged it's going to become. 
Over time, this technique may leave you with more frizzies, more split ends, things that are a result of hydro fatigue and moisture overload. And so if you like the results that it gives you, I think go for it, go ahead, do it as needed. But I personally would not recommend this for regular use. However, on the plus side, this whole method was developed in order to help reduce your water waste, which is a great thing. Instead of using lots of water, if you're taking really long showers and squishing to conditioning in that way, always make sure that you turn your water off while you are scrubbing your hair and also while you are detangling your hair. And don't be shy or scared to try the bowl method. I predicted that it wasn't gonna work well for me, that my hair wasn't going to look that good and that it was a technique only for really wavies. But I've seen some comments under other videos that it also works for tight textures as well. So if you decide to give it a try, I'll put those resources that you can look more into this technique in the description box below. I'll link all the products that I use in the description box below. And you never know what styling technique we're gonna try next. It's whatever that you request. So if you have some requests, comment below or tag me as you see them. I am on TikTok at Mains by Mel. Same username on Instagram at Mains by Mel. I'm even on Pinterest at Mains by Mel. So I will see you all over the interwebs, but especially each and every Texture Tuesday. Until next week, this has been your main girl Mel, and I am out. Peace. What's good, everybody? I don't even, we're just, we're back at it again with yet another viral trending review of a tutorial of a thing that you want me to do. <laughs> Why are you sitting there staring at me? It's really, it's really, you gotta go. Okay, Why don't, don't you come forget. around and let everyone see what you look like? Don't look what? Okay, bye. Cracker Jacker! Get out of here, you little rascal. <laughs>